Thank you. <laughs> um, I would like to tell you a little bit about our early experiences in Alaska. I, uh, I married a girl from West Virginia who I had first met in the seventh grade. We both went on to earn teaching certificates, and uh, we moved up to uh, Point Barrow in 1961. It's been a while. <laughs> when we went to Barrow in those days, Barrow was a hodgepodge of the ancient and the modern. The houses were just scattered hither and on. Nobody had any plan of how that village was supposed to fit together. It had just kind of grown up on its own. And consequently, the roads and the trails and the paths all went in different directions, and it was pretty hard to keep track of things. People simply built their homes where they felt, you know, that would be a nice place to put a house. Nobody owned property. When we got there, I began to realize, if I'm going to really see, experience, and enjoy this country, I got to go out like the local folks do. And the local people were traveling, traveling at those days in skin-covered canoes, i.e. umiaks, and by dog team. I figured, I got to have a dog team. Now, I had no idea what the heck I was getting into. But I ended up with a group of six untrained young huskies that belonged to Bud Helmrichs, who was a big game guide in that area at that time. And Bud had left the dogs in the village for someone to take care of while he and his family traveled to the lower 48. I ended up being that someone. Immediately I realized I had bitten off more than I could possibly chew. I had no idea on how to train a team of dogs. Now, most sled dogs are actually trained by other sled dogs when they're joined in with a new team. They, the, one dog teaches the other dog. I had no trained dogs. <laughs> Every evening, I would go out to where my dogs were tied, and I would put them in their harnesses, and I would run them out and put them on the, st the sled tow line and run back to the sled to take off. Well, in that little interim, the dogs had all wrestled themselves into a tangled mess. <laughs> and I was so frustrated that I would tie a line to the front of the team, and I would drag those dogs through the village, <laughs> out over the beach road to get them out of town. Local villagers would come out of their houses <laughs> And they would wave at me, and they would laugh themselves weak at the sight of this bumbling white man trying to be a dog musher. Now, finally, one local villager took pity on me, Eddie Hobson at that time. And Eddie had some really good dogs. Eddie told me, he said, Ray, he said, why don't you come on over? He says, I'll lend you four of my dogs. He said, uh, but he said, I tell you what, he said, you better not put them in with your dogs until you've had a chance to try them out on their own. Okay. Next Saturday dawned beautiful weather. It was so warm, unlike any day before that at that time. It was warm, it was clear, it was calm. Everybody had thrown open their doors and their windows to let in some welcome fresh air. Okay, so I, I thought, good day to go and try out Eddie's dogs. So I took my sled and I pushed it on over to Eddie's house. And when I got there, I realized why he told me I better try out his dogs first. They were huge. They looked like long-haired lions. <laughs> and they were absolutely insane to get into harness. Eddie helped me, you know, wrestle the dogs into their harnesses and put them on, the, on, on their lines. And I ran back to the back of the sled, jumped on, pulled up the sled anchor, and they took off in a dead run. 
I was, I was barely hanging on. And the one, the one rule, the one law of dog mushing is hang on. <laughs> so I'm hanging on. We go whipping in and out of all these village homes. People were scattering out of our way, but we were, heading for the, we were heading for the beach road, and I knew we were in pretty good shape. At that moment, a loose sled pup bolted across the road directly ahead of my dogs. My team never missed a beat. They made a right turn. <laughs> they were right on the tail of that dog, and that dog realized death was literally <laughs> nipping at its heels. The dog squealed in terror as it darted in and out of the, around the houses. The team was catching up. They were coming close. And suddenly, that dog dove through the entryway of a local village house. It went skidding across the floor took refuge under the table of a family that had sat down at their noonday meal. My team never hesitated. They went right in after it. Fortunately, the sled was too wide to fit in the doorway. It slammed into the frame. Everything came to a sudden stop. There's that pup cowering behind this, over in this corner. And five Anupian Eskimos were pasted to the wall <laughs> at the rear of the room. My reputation was made. Years, decades later, I was still hearing about the crazy tunic who drove his dog team into a village home.